Welcome back to uh, the latest video in the um, me painting my Street Fighter the miniatures board game uh, videos. So last uh, time we were together we uh, painted Balrog the boxer. Uh, I got to paint him in orange which was fantastic so that's my first uh, model in orange. Uh, I put him back in the cabinet, he's living back in there now. Um, there was an extra challenge uh, with Balrog, probably the most difficult one I've done yet. Uh, there will be more difficult ones, I think, but that's the most difficult one I've done yet. I still say it was a success, it went quite well. Uh, I have so far done uh, the bosses, the classic bosses, so we've done Sagat, Vega and Balrog. So it really has to be now um, Bison, it has to be Bison. So here we go. This is M. Bison. So, iconic Street Fighter character you know that those um those colors that red and thing where he's in that whether you know bison from the film or being stuck on him you know in the game because he was you know he was always a challenge right at the end of, of playing street fighter that iconic red so we're gonna change that up we're gonna totally flip it um Already, uh, I find that one of the colours I'm going to be doing bison is the blue and gold. Uh, already, even before looking at it in, on, on the game behind me, we're going to go um, blue and gold for one of them. I don't know why. It, I have memories of my uh, younger brother playing a lot of bison, and that was the colour that he always ended up both areas. Um, always, when I was playing against him, playing bison, he'd always have the blue and gold uh, version of it. So he'd always press the same button when, when choosing the character, which would choose the blue and gold one. So... Definitely blue and gold bison. As for the third one, you know the drill now. We'll basically play the game, we'll have a couple of look at different ones and then we'll decide. Um, in terms of painting, can I see any challenges? Yes, there's some effects to work around, but mostly very accessible. Uh, because of the wind effect with the cape, the cape is absolutely out the way. You know, it's right up there. Um, the cape as well is an interesting one because when you see Bison in game, from memory, I don't think you see the cape. The cape is on him for a second and disappears. So we're going to have to find out if the cape changes colour with the character because I don't think you can see that normally. So what are we going to do with the cape? Are we going to even change colour of it at all? Or will it match whatever colour the belt and the trim is? That's probably what we'll do. I don't know, I'm, I'm thinking out loud here. So, uh, there's our bison. Next up then is to take a look at some of the in-game stuff and see what colors we fancy, but definitely we are doing the blue and gold. That's a fact. So here we go. Bison, there's our bison in the red. And again, there's a slightly different red. So absolutely no difference between those first two as I'm finding with, it, with these color palette things. Uh, right, ah, there we go. So this is the one that I preambled about. That There it is. No point looking any more of that. That is definitely one we're going to have. Blue and gold. It's It's got something special to me. I just remember facing off against that bison a lot. Because my, my brother just tend to... My brother didn't even like Street Fighter that much. But I think he just chose characters. Uh, since his name starts with a B, he tend to pick bison or Blanca. So I remember fighting against that version of bison quite a bit. What else have we got? Unusual. That looks cool. Um, yeah, I won't have many characters in that kind of weird green, to be honest, and that kind of slightly reddy, bronzy plate. So, oh, and that that looks that looks memorable as well because obviously that's that's the kind of bison colours but reversed. Okay, let's play a bit of this. Let's play a bit in the blue remind myself why I'm choosing the blue one. I just love the gold. I love the metal obviously is going to look nice as a gold, isn't it? So that the the metal that's on the screen, uh, sorry, the me the metal that's on the model if it kind of gets replaced by gold, it makes sense. So, down at the table, uh ready to paint. M Bison. Here we are. This is one of the best models in the set, I think. I think his pose is brilliant, you know? Uh, really kind of captures what Bison's all about, really. So, um, as I said, without further ado, we've I've decided on this colour, it's the blue and gold. Let's go start it off. 
We've got McCrag Blue from the Citadel Paints. That's going to be first, and I'm just going to go for it. It's a base paint, so straight on to the model. And we'll start covering up that red with the blue. There we go, let's start. Well and truly beaten there by Ryu. But I do really do like that colour. That colour of bison is great. Now, when we started that match, I didn't keep an eye out on the cape. So I don't know whether whether there was a cape involved or whatever. So when you choose bison in like this two-player game, is there even a cape involved? So there's no cape on the on the sprites there. Let's have a look at this one. This one's an interesting one. So there's no cape. Let's keep an eye out when bison starts fighting in like a two-player game, whether the cape is no, no cape. So that gives us a conundrum. What do we do with the cape? Doesn't matter what moves I use with Bison, I tend to always know what I'm going to do. I got no strategy here, but just doing special moves. Yeah. Okay, something a bit different. Um, I just thought maybe we can go in and look at this game, the, the 30th anniversary collection game. Um, and I know that there's a museum, and museum has characters. So basically you can choose your, your character that you want to kind of um, investigate anything about. And we'll actually go to M. Bison, wherever he is. There we go, it gives you some kind of stats and whatnot. And a, and a, and a write up. Quite an extensive uh, write up, actually. And there's his uh, picture there. And there we go, it shows some of the sprites and the different moves, the sprites within the moves, which I think is it's all quite cool, actually. Uh, that was Street Fighter 2. On then to Street Fighter 2, the new challenges, and uh, he's in that weird grey looking colour. And then Alpha as well, where he just got fat. Um, so, yeah. So back to Street Fighter 2, that's, that's, the, that's the classic. Yeah, it's a shame. Oh, this would be wonderful if I could change the colour within this museum. That would be, that would be wonderful. Uh, just checking, to be honest, to make sure that... Um, I'm not being stupid in that, that there is, isn't a button that just does that, no, sadly not. So yeah, you can um, check those uh, characters, oh, and you can even go into the different versions straight from here, so you can just look at them there. So that's quite handy, but it doesn't uh, help us with, with Bison at the moment, we're looking at how to get maybe images of his cape in different colours. This uh, history mode goes through the ages, so you can basically look at the games and when they came out. So there you go, there's Street Fighter, Street Fighter Hyper Fighting. There you go, and like a timeline. So yeah, that's that's the museum, that's quite cool. So, um, just put the base blue on. There we go. Um, that actually took quite a bit of time. Um, there's a lot of little details that, under the the silver part, so you have to get with the blue. So actually more to do on this model than first initially thought. Straightforward with the brush stroke and more or less get in where I need to without the effects or the or the, the cape getting in the way. But I uh, have actually quite a few more details to be careful of not to, you know, go over too much. So yeah, got the blue on. Uh, this blue actually dries much darker than I thought. Is he's very, very dark blue. I'm gonna definitely light that up with some uh, lighter blues that I've got to make it pop out. Um, I'm gonna wait for that to dry. On to the next model now, I think, which means uh, I have decided. So, out of these two red bisons, we'll paint one. Okay, it's gonna be this one. And we're gonna paint this one. Hmm. We are going to paint it. I really like the green and bronze. And I think that that seems to be my favourite. The, the other one that I do like though is the the grey, almost white to grey 
you know, um, bodysuit or whatever he wears, and then the the red, like a metallic red, um, you know, metal parts. I don't have a colour like that, meta metallic red, apart from maybe a, a red glaze, which I have, but I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure how I would get that effect with that, that red metal. I'm sure there's new paints out constantly that would do that. Or I go with a bronzy, that weird looking teal green, which again, I don't have that color, to be honest, that kind of, you know what it reminds me of, mint. It's kind of like a mint green, isn't it? I don't really have a mint green, but I'm sure whitening up one of the greens would get that effect. Or I go for that gray look. I'm gonna go mint green. Mint green, it's the crazy choice. So let's go mint green. Mint green bison. Sounds like a dessert, lovely. That's what we're gonna go. I'm gonna try and make some paint. So just to get the color uh, as I want it, I've got the green there. Uh, and then I'm gonna take quite a bit of uh, a white out of this white scar and then just, uh, you know, load it up really. Who knows, I might not get that minty colour I'm after. And if I don't, doesn't matter. It's the best thing about painting. If you don't get what you want, don't worry. Just paint it another colour. I can always fall back on that just, you know, white grey style colour instead. There we are, I'm trying to put a lot of white because I know it's going to need a lot of white to get to the kind of minty colour that I want. Ooh, you know what? It's actually looking all right. It's um, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. Again, the reason I'm washing my brush every time is I, I don't want to get too much white um, green into this white pot here. It just makes it dirty up, really, if you do so. So as that is mixing, it's looking quite minty. I am looking for that kind of Vianetta consistency. Uh, not consistency even, colour. <laughs> Vianetta consistency would not go well because you'd be cracking through the layers of chocolate to get to the tasty ice cream inside. I'm not sponsored by Vianetta. However, this colour... I think this colour is going to be what I want it to be. I probably want it to be lighter than... than. So if, if it looks fine there, you remember you're looking at a really wet paint, I need it to be maybe even lighter than I think it'll be on the model. So if that colour is almost there, I, I still need more. I still need more white. The reason you, I'm doing a lot of white is because I put quite a bit of green there because if you know once I'm happy with the color um it will actually you know I will need quite a bit of paint to get through the entire model because you know you don't want to be changing again and trying to match that color again it's kind of make sure you've got enough paint if you're going mixing that's not bad. The lightest part of that is not bad at all. Also, I've got a bit of dark on the sides there, which I haven't truly mixed in yet. So I might even start. You know what? I'm gonna, I think I'm going to start painting with that. I'm going to start using that paint there. Um, can I get in even more? There we are. So that's me. I've got, I've got that colour. I'm happy with that kind of minty colour. Um, so go ahead. I'll keep those uh, paints on standby, as I feel like I might have to... Keep that colour if I'm not happy with it as soon as we go on the model. So there we go, 
uh, took a little bit less time this time with the, the second colour, only because you, you get used to where you can paint and where the tricky parts are. Um, took much more paint. Like I said, um, this was a layer, a mixed layer. So without the base paint, I definitely had to be a bit more careful with my strokes. It did look patchy in a few places, so I had to go back over it with a bit more paint. As it dries, I might even have to do that again because I might notice that some bits just look like the brush strokes are still there because the paint is that thin and the red will start showing through. So I've still got a little bit of paint that I'm, as I'm seeing those little areas um, of blotchiness, I'm kind of like just adding a little bit more paint like that. But that's the colour though. That's the colour that I wanted and yeah, really happy. I'm, I'm really glad I chose the lime one over the, the grey colour one. So it's going to look quite different. There we go. Both the uh, the colours are on, so um, we're back to painting two models at once. So there we are, we've got our mint and our blue. There we go. Great, great kind of first colours to get down. However, this blue is darker than I want it to be. So this is the one that's dried. So the next thing we're going to do is put on a lighter blue, a uh, much lighter blue, just to make it pop out. Um, we have got... Hmm... We have got this blue, which is Aliotok blue, which might be what we're after. Um, I have got, <laughs> funny enough, this one's actually a green colour, but it's quite blue. But that Aliotech blue might be the one. I don't think we'll be going as light as Temple Guard blue, which is that. That's a very light blue. Um, I don't think we'll be going to there. We could try it, though. Um, uh, that might be McCrag blue, but... I think we can go as high as that uh, Aliotok blue. We'll, we'll try that to see if the blue looks a bit brighter. Uh, next, after I've put the blue on there, um, is going to be this one. Uh, I used to use a lot of this. It's the Armour Gold. So uh, when you've got Space Marines and stuff, or the Honor Guard that I used to paint, I used to have a lot of these um, the gold things. So um, I've given it a good shake because I haven't used it in a while. And if anything, it's looking a little bit thick. So we'll see how it actually paints on. We'll grab our bison. And we'll start with something easily accessible. I'm not going to do the uh, the feet ones yet. I'm going to try and just do the, the one around the, the arms first. Just to see how this thing goes on. Let's have a look. Because, you know... If you're ever worried about your paints not being at their best, if you haven't used them in a while, it's always probably best, if you're in doubt, to just get some new ones. However, i found they do last pretty well over the years. I mean, this, I'm not sure if this gold is going to work just straight on like this. If it doesn't, then I will be base coating it in yellow for some reason I just thought the gold might take to the to the silver underneath but it's definitely not so there we go there's a good example now of me trying something like that gold oh good you can't you can barely see it and you can barely see it for a good reason because it is not working so this gold is not taking to it at all okay so it's it's really terrible so that means I am going to start off by colouring the these armour plates in a base yellow to start with. Then maybe I can push it on up to the to the gold colour and see if it takes that way. So yeah, there you go. There's a fail. The base yellow um, makes all the difference. Now maybe on camera it just looks there. Oh wow, yeah, great. You're done. You've you've done the yellow. You've done the blue. Fantastic. Um, I still want this yellow to be more me metallic, and that's what hopefully I'll get with that. Uh, gold layer so it'll take this time hopefully so the yellow will dry and then I'll basically have that nice base to put the yellow on uh, the gold on sorry on top of the yellow so yes and I've also highlighted with that lighter blue which you know may not be visible it's it's really subtle to be honest but hopefully it does lift that blue up a little bit without me having to go lighter again because it is a, a like a royal blue you know um and I don't want to you know, change it into a really light. I, I just want it to, to pop out, you know. So I'm almost there with that, you know. Um, I think once it's dry, I'll attempt it with that gold. 
So I've um, started on the uh, the green one there, and all I've started doing with um, this is the Jokeko orange. So basically taking a nice base colour of orange and putting it on the um, silver part of the, uh, the kind of leg defenders or whatever they are. Leg braces, I don't know. But whatever they are. And I'm just putting a nice orange on them to hopefully then get that copper on top later on. Okay? So you can tell what parts of the... Well, hopefully you can tell what parts of the model that I have taken the gold over. So it all depends on the quality of my camera here, to be honest. But the this leg, uh, so as I'm standing, the right okay, uh, leg and the right arm and the right shoulder have all had the gold paint on there which hopefully reflects the light a bit more than this, this, and the bottom leg there, because they have not. They're still on the, the yellow. So basically, in person, you can really tell that the, the light shines off this side more than this side. Um, but again, I think you have to be in person for it. Uh, who knows if you can actually see the difference on camera. Maybe you can in the shoulders there, perhaps. Okay, so this side has been done. So it looks a bit more like metal. I'm hoping for the same effect on the other one as well. We'll see if I get that. So on this one, um, see if you can tell what I've done. So the legs, I've done both of them. Okay, so they're both in that shiny copper, uh, not the slightly duller orange. And then shoulder pads, I have not done. But if you look at this bracer, that's the one I've done. Okay, so that's the the difference. It's kind of like a terracotta and then that steel, isn't it? It's kind of like if there was a texture to the paints, that would be terracotta and that would be metal. And those that's the difference. So you see the shoulder pad down there. See the difference? That's got the metal. And then this one is terracotta, so as, as I put it on, you see the difference. Yeah, so there you go. So yeah, they are getting to look quite nice. So, uh, nearing the end now with our uh, Bison models, just waiting for those last metal paints to, to dry. Um, very pleased with how they, they've worked out, you know, it's, um, I didn't actually realise this, but you've got, um, unintentionally of course, I've done kind of copper effect, Bison, or, or if you like, bronze, right? Then the original is still in its silver, and then you've got the, the blue one, which has got the gold. So there we go. We've got the um, the Olympic selection of bisons there. Now, I'm just going to go over the belt with a bit of black. And that will be my bisons done. Thanks very much for watching me paint my M bisons. Uh, both of them there. There we are. And the original together at last there we go so remember to check out some of the other videos that i've been painting i've been painting uh all the bosses so far uh and who knows where i will go next so um take a look and thanks very much for watching the channel see you next time